Okay, so CSS3, what we're going to talk about in this movie is color and how we are going to handle that a little bit differently than probably what you've done with, with style sheets in the past. Uh, and for this example here, I have got, I've got some code in here, but really we're going to be dealing with a single button that just says click me on it. And if I go back over to the browser, obviously you know what this is going to look like. It's just going to be a link that says click me. Now, what we're going to do is kind of play with the color on some of these things. And one thing that we have done in the past, and I have just some style tags up here, and let's just drop this in. Um, by the way, this little link has a class I've assigned to it called button. And so I'll write the class for button. And what we're going to do is put some braces in there. Okay, now, in the past what we've done is we've said things like, um, you know, we've defined color and then with a semi or a colon and then the hex value. So you can use like something like pound zero 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 zero, and that gives you the hex value for the color black. Um, there's, you know, all kinds of hex values you can use. You can even use shorthand. So if I go FFF, I get that's a shorthand. It's a three-digit um, uh, value representation for the color white. Now, one thing that we've added um, now as we move into CSS3 is an alpha channel to the RGB spectrum. So color is measured, especially on a computer screen, in that color space is red, green, and blue values. So that's the RGB of that. And then actually what we're going to do is an RGBA. So let me show you how this works. So if we do color and then we do a semicolon, then I'm going to say RGBA. And then in parentheses, it, this requires four values separated by commas. So if I say something like zero, comma zero, comma zero, comma one, and we'll explain what this means. The first value is the red channel. The second value is the green channel. The third value is the blue channel. And then finally, the fourth is the alpha channel. These are all set to zero and the alpha channel is set to one. So this is just going to be the color black with no opacity set to it. So let's go back over. And if I refresh the page, you can see that our link is now black. Now, this is going to be a hard one to deal with a lot of opacity on because I don't have really an image behind it that shows that. Uh, but I could turn this opacity down by half. So if one is a full 100%, 0.5 would be 50% of that. So this would be half. So actually now when I go back and refresh, this is just going to come across as a gray. But if I had, um, if I were doing this to a background color and had an image underneath, you would start to see the image. This is actually an alpha channel. So that's really important to understand. Uh, but the RGB values are the red, green, and blue. And these are a little different than hexadecimal values. So um, you're probably wondering where can I find um, what these values, uh, you know, how do I look these up? How do I translate these into, you know, my work as a designer? Well, there's two places. Um, the first one, if you, if you use Photoshop or any kind of graphics editor, they're usually displayed when you're selecting colors. So if I go down to the color palette or my my um, my foreground background here, double click on one of those, I get the color picker window up. And uh, anytime I click in here, you know, we change our color value. And here's my new one. This is kind of one of these red colors. And you can see that we have a bunch of things. We have HSB values. We have lab values. We have CMYK. We have the hexadecimal value that we used to use for web design. Uh, and you can still use that, by the way. But uh, if you want that alpha channel, you got to use it this way. But I can see now that my red, green, blue values are right here, RGB. So it's 201, 34, 34, if I want to get that color of red. And so I could go plug these numbers into that style sheet. Here's one, 200, 29, 29. In fact, if I go do that, let's do that. Um, and these need to be separated by commas. So 200, comma, 29, comma 29, comma 0.5. This, the opacity is now going to be half. So this was going to be a red, but let me show you, it's going to look a lot lighter because we have the opacity set. So if I refresh, there it is. It's a light red. Let's set that opacity clear back up to one and you'll see the actual color that we chose in Photoshop there. And there it is. It's that red. So that's one place you can find these. If you don't use Photoshop or uh, maybe you don't want to open Photoshop and you're a little more of a hurry than that. Another solution that I really like is actually a website. It's an online web app. If you go to, and this is what it looks like. This is an Adobe web app, actually. And the URL on here is cooler.adobe.com. So that's K-U-L-E-R dot adobe.com. So this is the Adobe Cooler project. And it really helps if you are signed in and have an account with them because you're able to save settings and things. But it basically allows you to uh, set and edit color palettes. So if I grab, I don't know, this ray gun gothic that somebody made, and I go over here and I say I want to edit this, I get my color sliders, and you have a color wheel up here. And this does the same thing that Photoshop does. It gives you your HSV values, your RGB values, CMYK lab, everything you need basically. So if I grab this slider and I flip it over and I kind of want this brown color, uh, I would know that it's 129, 67, 23. Those are my hex values, or excuse me, my RGB values. So RGB values, this is very important. And I, you know, unless you're just a glutton for punishment to start memorizing what things are in your head, um, I would use a tool like this. So this is Adobe Cooler, or you could use something like uh, Photoshop or any graphics editor that allows you to set those values. So that's basically how color is going to work when we're dealing with RGBA as uh, an attribute. So anyway, we're going to move on. I'm going to talk about some more CSS3 things you need to know.